is going on everybody? My name is Northy and today I have got my round 17 preview. Now, what we are going to be doing today is going through a few of the changes that I've made, mainly in top 10 because I've shown you guys star, star powers a lot as of late. However, the thing with star powers is that I'm at the point where I really don't feel comfortable making any changes. The team is decent enough to get me high points and uh, potentially even some prize cards in the future. Obviously, we've been on a streak of no prize cards for a good while, but I think the team still has what it takes to do it. We'll see here. Look, it's the same team as usual. There's no changes um, compared to what we've usually done, but we'll see what happens in the future. We got Josh Kelly, Fontenpelli, Anderson, Parker, and Amon. Again, um, I thought about maybe Simpkin, but I cannot trust North Melbourne player. I just cannot trust putting them in there. It sucks. I wish I could. But Carl Amon has had too many good games for me to just ignore him. So uh, he's staying in. Anderson was probably the only big thing that I was thinking about. Like, do I switch him out or not with Luke Parker in the team star power department? But you can see there, Luke Parker averages 83 while Anderson averages 81. So not much of a change. It really is just a toss of, to toss of the coin. And uh, we're going to stick with Parker again. Just hopefully things go well for us. And uh, we can get ourselves into the top 30. Because 64, it's not the worst, but it's not what we're looking for. So uh, hopefully next week we can get this and this rank for the season a little bit higher. Because Hale 16 is right on our tail. We need to get out of that situation. Then we head over to top team. As I mentioned before, uh, we want to try and do some different things. Uh, we've got here Jack Sinclair as our backman. I've been going Sicily for a long time, but I've realized with top four, you have to take some risks. And my risk that I was feeling like taking was Jordan Dawson, but I've only had him in one round and Jack Sinclair can also put up some great performances. So I've chucked Sinclair in the back, po uh, in the back position. Hopefully he can repeat as the uh, high scorer. I swear if it is Sinclair, Sorry, if it is um, Sicily, if he has the best game, I may cry. I don't know what to do if Sicily ends up getting it. But we've got Sinclair in. He's been consistently really good. Hopefully a lot of marks and one percenters in there. See how it goes. Um, yeah, again, my other choice was Dawson. Uh, it could have been either one of them. We'll see how that ends up. Blitzarves may have been a half decent choice. I can't remember off the top of my head. But we go over the midfield and I put in Lockie Neal. I was thinking Oliver, but they were up against Geelong and so I kind of held back on it and went with Neal. Turns out to be a good idea. Oliver and Petraka both had pretty decent games. Petraka had three goals. Uh, so that's, that's pretty good. That's putting some scoreboard pressure on uh, and it's great to see that from your midfielders. But neither of them had outstanding games. Lockie Neal potentially could. He always has the potential to just absolutely wreck, wreak havoc on a game. So I'm hoping he does it this week. Um, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how that pickup goes. Because Lockie Neal, again, he's probably the safest option for a lot of people. But at the same time, I would really, really like to see him just absolutely blow out of the park. Because it doesn't matter if they're a regular pick or some a, a player that a lot of people pick. If he plays the best, he's the best pick. We're going with Riley O'Brien this time. I made this pick mainly because he's playing at the highest level consistently right now. Max Gorn is also back, but he's not playing like outstanding. Or he didn't play outstanding from what I can remember. Neither did Luke Jackson, so thank God I didn't make the decision to switch him into my forward position. We stuck with Bontempelli this week for the um, main forward position. Could have been Cameron, could have been Hawkins, but again, it's that matchup against Melbourne. No one was going to have an overly outstanding game that we would have known, that we would have thought of. It literally was a toss-up because in those games, your role players are the ones that are most likely going to shine. Obviously, if your best players are out there against the best, it's going to be just a, an absolute clash. Like, both of them are going to clash. They're both probably going to have the games they want to play because they're just dominant in their own ways to the point where it almost is they lock horns at a really, really high level. It's when the role players come in that really starts to show which team is better. And uh, if I can remember correctly, I think Men and Gola did okay? No, sorry, it was Duncan. Mitch Duncan. And that's not to say that he's like a role player, because he's been around for a long time. And Mitch Duncan, I think, recently had his 250th. So uh, it's very, very interesting to see who exactly went crazy. Uh, we had Tom Atkins. Tom Atkins ended up being the defender that ended up getting 108 fantasy points. Jack Viney, again, he's he's a midfielder. He, um, I think he's a, a, a bit underrated considering Petraka and Oliver and Gorn are all on the same team. But Viney, he did his thing as well. So I may have been a good pickup for some to chuck him in. But Bontempelli is um, our pick for the forwards. Thankfully, he didn't fall into the Luke Jackson trap. 
Um, and Max Gordon didn't have his best game either. So hopefully a few top scorers picked Max Gordon thinking he was going to have an outstanding one. But when it's up against the top squad, they know how to shut down certain players. And Max Gordon, I'd imagine, was one of them. Even though the last time they played him was in the prelim final last year, where they absolutely thumped him and Max Gordon had his game. I guess it's just coming off of injury. But last week, we were 167th overall. 362 points, which isn't terrible. And uh, rank six for the season. So hopefully with this team, we can get that 400, that that coveted 400 point mark. You can see here last week, loads of 400 point games. Um, and I'd imagine those have come from the likes of the people who picked Cameron, maybe even Hawkins, and then Riley O'Brien as the Ruckman. Uh, we go here, maybe one of the Melbourne boys or even Lockie Neal. One of these high 100 point scorers. And then Sinclair, obviously, just a ridiculous game. Lots of 100-point backmen as well. So you can tell there are a lot of people getting 400s. But unfortunately, we managed to stick out last week. So hopefully this week changes it. But we go over to top 18 now. Um, the few changes that I've made are mainly the midfield. Uh, Sam Walsh is out. And my fear with Sam Walsh is going to have a great game all of a sudden. But we've got Clayton Oliver in instead. He has 100 points, which is pretty good. So Oliver's the main change, I think, in the middle. And then our, our Ruckman, of course, is no longer... Wits, it is going to be Riley O'Brien. Wits dominates against Ruckman, who aren't, you know, necessarily the greatest Ruckman, but he doesn't have his way against, like, certified Ruckman. Like, he did okay when he played against O'Brien. Same did O'Brien, and O'Brien played all right too, but neither of them really, like, shot off. So with Ruckman, I really either like to look for the, almost the star power or the effectiveness of how much they play. Yeah, so Ruckman are mainly just um, matchups and star power. So Riley O'Brien is definitely one of the better Ruckman for the year. So it's always good to keep him in your mind. And he also would have had a uh, mismatch with the 48 hit out. Um, so that shows that O'Brien was the best pick for the week. Uh, Rowan Marshall, very close. Same with Sean Darcy. A lot of Ruckman to look out for. Especially now that Nick Natanui is back. Now that Nat Nui is back, it's going to be interesting to see how many people switch up to him. Uh, although West Coast aren't the greatest side this year. Nat Nui may be a late season pickup you may want to make. Uh, depending on how he plays for the rest of the season. But 75 points is not bad for a comeback game. Sorry, not even 75. 85. That's not bad at all. Uh, we, but the biggest changes, I think, come in the forward line. So, Bontempelli, Himmelberg, Jackson, and Moore are the same. But we've switched out. Jamie Elliott, who I believe has appeared for the first time in the team, he's playing against North Melbourne. And although I believe Mason Cox is probably going to be one that people look out for, I don't think Mason Cox is... Oh, no, he may be in here. You think so? I'm looking for Mason, but I can't find him. I don't know whether he's either as a Ruckman. I don't think he's a Ruckman. There's no shot they've put him in at Ruckman. Uh, but all I know is that it's Brody Grundy. Yeah, of course not. But all I know is Mason Cox may be um, a player that some people try to pick up if he's in there. Um, Dugowie maybe. But at the moment, it's literally just pick whoever is playing against North. That's why I've kept Crispin after his pretty average week. Because although he's listed as Backman and against a team like North, the backline probably won't be used as much. Chris often plays in the middle. And so that could hopefully be his best chance at getting some numbers. So I'd imagine a lot of people have Crisp in as their backman this week. May have been a good choice for us. But I'm going to say that he's not necessarily needed as much. I think it's going to be the forward line that really benefits from this game. Hence why I have Elliot to see how, how, how well he can do. Again, no flash performances so far this season. Above average week last week, but with no goals is really good. So hopefully... That can improve this week with the extra marks and even hopefully the extra goals. We'll see how that goes, but Tex is also the other change. I believe Adelaide are up against a fairly similar side. I think it's Hawthorne, but I cannot confirm. All I know is Tex Walker and Darcy Fogarty are starting to become a nice little one-two punch. And Tex Walker likes to run up the field and kind of play um, for those possessions. And so he's an awesome forward pick to, to choose per week. Just as long as he's uh, being effective. You can see here only the 11 disposals. Had the uh, 6 mark, which you really, really like to see. And only the 2 goals. So hopefully against a lower tier side, we'll be able to see a bit better of a performance from him and Fogarty. But nonetheless, I think the forwards are probably the weirdest it's looked in a really long time. If you had told me Himmelberg was in this team at this point, I would probably call you crazy. Um, obviously last week didn't have a game like he has been so far for the last couple of weeks as a backman, but who knows? Maybe it changes up. Hopefully it changes up. Uh, again, no changes to the back line. Uh, but our hope, as per usual, is to get as high as possible. 
Uh, rank 76 last week. Not great. Uh, we want to try and hit 1700. I think 1700 is always the goal with this one. I think it gives us the best chance at not only making the top 10, but also um, shooting up some positions in the uh, season rankings. Because we do want to finish in the top 10 by, by the end of the season. It's just all dependent on how we go with these last few rounds. As we're, I think, six rounds towards the end. That's crazy to think about. Top 10 is the aim. 1700 points. I think we can do it. Luke Jackson's performance doesn't give me all that much hope. I think Oliver didn't have his greatest performance, which is always great. That's so, so nice, Oliver. Viney did much, much better. Uh, and it annoys me that uh, he definitely would have been in here. He had, ranked, he had 73 points last week. <sighs> My hope is that things finally change for us and we get ourselves a top 10 in here. But it's been so rough this season, man. So, so rough. Backline... Let's do it again. Let's let's please have a good week. This was a really, really good week last week. Let's try and do it again, please. Please. <laughs> I'm hoping for the best, but nonetheless, I'm going to go into the tips. And of course, because it was a Thursday night start, one of them has already happened. I tipped Melbourne. I really thought they could have done it. I think last season proved they could do it. <sighs> Melbourne, man, they're just, it's like they've lost that competitive edge they had. Obviously, teams scout and, you know, work out how to beat each other, but Melbourne feel like they've just completely stepped off the gas. Geelong beating them by 28 at GMHBA may be expected for some, but uh, Geelong, after their really shaky season last season, now all of a sudden look like a genuine contender again, and I hate saying that because Geelong have been at the top for so long, and obviously their game last week didn't help, but uh, Friday night, tonight, uh, Western Bulldogs versus Sydney. I have tipped Sydney it's at the SCG, however, I'm not all that sure they'll get it done because they have lost some pretty gettable games at the SCG. For example, Gold Coast they lost to there. Uh, the Doggies could do it. North have even had it close with Sydney at the, at the SCG. I think it's all just going to come down to how Sydney comes out. It's going to be very, very interesting. All the best to both sides. It's going to be a fun game to watch, but I think it's going Sydney's way. Uh, Collingwood North, I don't need to say much. It's going to go Collingwood's way. And the real tip is whether we lose by 40 or not. That's really the unfortunate tip. It's at the MCG too. Collingwood home game will definitely have a heavy crowd Collingwood way. Uh, it's going to be rough. But nonetheless, we move. And trust the process, baby. Gold Coast versus Richmond at Metricon. I really, really want Gold Coast to win this one. Last week's defeat was really crushing for them, I think. I believe I've tipped Richmond. However, I wouldn't be surprised to see either team win it. It's going to be a fun one, that's for sure. Their game against Collingwood was super fun. Just unfortunate they were on the wrong end for Gold Coast. But there's all the chance in the world that they do it against Richmond. It could go either way, but I've tipped Richmond for that one. St. Kilda versus Fremantle. I have gone with Fremantle. Fremantle's last performance at Marvel Stadium, I believe, was against Carlton. And obviously, Saints have just come off beating them at Marvel. So this could be a really, really good time for, for St. Kilda to kick it into overdrive. I've tipped Frio, but in second thoughts and kind of thinking back on it, I wouldn't be surprised if St. Kilda take it. And even right now, I'd probably say St. Kilda over Fremantle right now. But maybe I'm just doubting Fremantle and their improvement this season. Uh, we go to Port versus, versus Giants, though. Uh, the Giants, they've just looked pretty shocking. They've looked pretty shocking all season. Even in their games where they look like they're doing well, like against the Dogs, they still lose. It's strange this season for the Giants. I've tipped Port because Port, after finally finding their form, look like a genuine, genuine finals threat. It's just unfortunate their, their super rough start looks like it could take them out of the finals, which is crazy. But we go over to Sunday now, Brisbane versus Essendon. I've tipped Brisbane, however... Essendon may have some fight in them. Who knows? Uh, Zach Merritt has continued to shine. Bit of an underrated year for him, I think. But nonetheless, Brisbane, I believe, will take it at the Gabba. Uh, Hawthorne versus Adelaide. I was correct about that one. Um, I have tipped Adelaide, I think. I think Adelaide at their best could definitely be better. I know it's at Marvel, but I'm still confident in Adelaide, man. I think they have a chance... And not only that, the Riley O'Brien pick may be good because I can't remember who the Hawthorne Ruckman is, but I'm pretty sure it's an inexperienced Ruck, so Riley may have a good night again. Uh, I'm going to tip Adelaide for that one. And then West Coast versus Carlton. I have tipped Carlton. However, West Coast have been looking pretty nice at WA right now. They're looking quite nice. Again, could go either way. Carlton, this is your time to respond. Keep your like heavy final chances alive. 
because you definitely don't want to slip out of the four, especially after that loss to St. Kilda last week. So best of luck to both teams and best of luck to everyone in the round. Let's hope North Melbourne win it all. <laughs> but nonetheless, that is it for the round 17 preview. Uh, if you guys did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new, and I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye.